Hi, Christina. Nice to nice to talk to you again. I spoke. Uh, I interviewed you for Bumblebee last year. Oh, lovely. <laughs> for nice the, to speak to you again. Yeah, for the DVD. So thank you so much for your time. And I'm so like I love the movie Birds of Prey. I love it. And I think you nail the script and just and cat on the direct direction and everything else about it. And Thanks. yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah, you were a female screenwriter, female director. The cast is pretty much female in in this like environment that was always dominated by male, <laughs> male yeah. before. How did you incorporate that part of us on the script? Honestly, I think it comes fairly naturally. I think I am a woman, so I can't help but write as a woman. I bring my perspective to it kind of inherently. And I think that's honestly one of the things that I love about this movie is that we weren't trying to push a female agenda. It wasn't, we didn't have to force anything. It all just felt very natural. You know, we hired the best director for the job. Um, we hired, you know, HODs who were female because they were the right person for the job. Um, so from top to bottom, I just think it, it all happened very naturally in a way that was very satisfying and then made for, as you say, a pretty female-heavy experience, um, but one that felt inherently good. It wasn't because of, you know, some prescribed agenda. Yes. And you, and you work with the, uh, like, together with him, uh, Margot and Kathy, like, for pretty much, like, five years, almost five years? Yeah, Margot and I met about four and a half years ago, and then I met Kathy uh, just shy of two years ago. Yes, and how much did it change since you start like putting on paper, talk the first conversations to now? Did it change a lot? No, honestly, I mean things always change, and there are different iterations of things. But the spirit of the movie has been the same since Margot and I first started on it. Um, we always knew we wanted to tell, you know, a different kind of story. We wanted to tell a superhero ensemble that didn't feel like any superhero ensemble you've seen before. We wanted to take risks and do something edgy. We wanted to use Harley Quinn as the mouthpiece. Um, and as such, that kind of set the tone for the kind of slightly crazy, wild, wacky story that you, that you see on screen. So while the specific change, I would say the spirit of the movie never changed. I'm from Brazil. And in Brazil, usually when you translate an, a movie, we put the name of the character and put something else and then now and then i noticed that you guys put like birds of prey and fabulous emancipation of yeah. one harley queen why did you guys decide to to do this long title <laughs> to the movie <laughs> honestly it began as a joke so you know the movie was but we didn't decide on the title for a long time we knew it was the blood the prey harley movie we had a code name for the project but we kept in meetings people would read it you know executives would read it and say, you know, what is the movie really about? And for Margot and I, it was always obvious. And so one day as a joke, I put on the title page, um, you know, and the protagonist emancipation of one Harley Quinn and using playful, silly words like fantabulous felt so right for Harley. Um, and really the emancipation was always at the core of the story. Thematically, that was so resonant for us. Um, so yeah, I put it on there as a joke. And then when it came to much, much later, once we had Cassie on board, um, and we started shooting, I think. We started fishing around for different title ideas, and we went through the obvious ones. Um, and all of us, you know, from from marketing at Warner's to the producers to me to Kathy to Margot, we all kept gravitating back to the joke <laughs> title because it felt so right for us. Yeah, no, I thought that was fantastic. And, and also uh, talking about the cast... Not just the, mm -hmm. the girls, but I think uh, Ian McGregor is and Chris Messina were f fantastic. <laughs> and why? They, yes, why they they are like perfect for for play them because I think they got yeah. the, the 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 core of the the character. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they they really did, and I think Ewan and Chris are both such talented actors, and they're both just wonderful humans to work with. You know, on a, as you say, on a female heavy production like this, you want to invite the right men in, and they really were. They were so sensitive and thoughtful and warm and funny and I think that's one of the great things about Roman Sionis is as a villain he is incredibly dangerous and scary and evil but he's also really charismatic and funny um, and Ewan balances that so well and uh, did you did you read like a lot of comic books to prepare for 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 write the script like a lot a lot um, <laughs> Margo and I went to the DC library um, and just took home armfuls and armfuls of comics and did a huge amount of reading um, just to get to know all of these characters. You know, obviously Harley first. Um, Margot obviously knew her from Suicide Squad. 
But then we just did a deep dive on all of the other characters um, and, and really just fell in love with them one by one. Yeah. One thing that I that I thought that was like fantastic, I should tell this in the beginning, the the way that you told the the, the, the way the script goes, like back and forward, like with the flashbacks and uh, it started one way and then goes to the flashback of her life. And the way that everything happens is the way that the uh, Harley Quinn thinks. I, I don't know. Yeah. I got that sense. And then I was like, oh, this is fantastic because she's a little crazy. Yeah. And then yeah. the script goes back and forward the way that she thinks. And then I think it was genius. I don't know. I just <laughs> love I that point. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to tell the story the way that only Harley could. Yeah. Um, so that needed to come through, you know, in the dialogue, but also just in the structure, as you say. Yeah. Another thing that I noticed is like the on the on the comics the black canary is a uh, Caucasian or yeah. like more why did you guys decide to change her to uh, do a race change on her was like on purpose was like diversity on screen and off screen is super important to, to both Margot and I so very very early on I think it was actually the first draft um, I just specified that I wanted her to be mixed race um, and no one ever pushed back no one ever questioned it and I think Journey Smollett Bell does an unbelievably good job as, as Black Canary. It's hard to imagine anyone else playing that role now. She really embodied that character um, and did a fantastic job playing her. She brings real warmth and depth um, and humanity while kicking a lot of ass. Yes, all of them. Rosie, uh, Mary Elizabeth, I think all of them yeah. bring a little... It's like it's uh, the, the, the whole cast, the whole assembly is like it's, it's wonderful. And, and I really appreciate what you what you did. And and, and for you, like, you, uh, in this movie, you, you, you went all in because it's like a rated. And before, like, you wrote, like, the Bumblebee was PG-13. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you enjoy a lot doing that? Like, you can do no... I, <laughs> I had so much fun writing this movie. And listen, I had, I had fun writing Bumblebee. Bumblebee makes sense, PG-13. Um, and likewise, Harley Quinn makes sense to be R-rated. She is not a character who uh, understands restraint. Um, so to be able to be R-rated in both the language that they use, but also in the way that they fight, to see the action scenes, you know, go to down with the with the violence. I think it's really fantastic and exciting. Yeah. Do you have like a favorite scene on this movie? Just, uh, <laughs> I have many favorite scenes. You're asking me to pick my favorite child, but I think one of my favorite frames is um, Margot's face when the egg sandwich dies. Makes me laugh every time. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. And now you like moving to like you you writing for uh, the Batgirl and you also writing the the Flash. I wanna mm -hmm. just I wanna be like very interesting to see your take on a male character. You know what I mean? And yeah. are you excited? <laughs> I am excited. I mean, for me, honestly, they're all just characters. They're all just human beings. And getting to write any of these characters is about falling in love with them and and kind of taking on that voice. Um, so for me, it doesn't matter if they're male or female. It's really just about whether or not I'm excited about writing them, and I'm so excited about both both projects. Um, it's a, an amazing opportunity and a real honor. Yes, that's great. Thank you, Christina, for your time. Thank it's like you. a pleasure Thank to talk to you again. again, and and I hope you'll be a success, and I'm for sure you'll be. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye bye. -bye.